Hi, I'm Josh from Shizen Style. Whether it's your own Japanese garden you've been working on or you're able to visit a Japanese garden somewhere, I encourage you to grab your camera and start developing your creative eye. In this video, I've got about eight tips and a few bonuses for you to improve your Japanese garden photography so you can really make them come alive and ultimately bring some of that nature and creativity inside with you. If all you have access to is the camera on your phone, then start with that. But there's a whole world of artistic tools out there when you move into a full frame camera. For myself, I've found that over the years I've been photographing and filming Japanese gardens, I've improved both my photographic skills as well as my Japanese garden design skills. A lot of this comes from studying composition. Japanese gardens bring in a wide range of photography styles to practice, like nature photography, landscape photography, still life, macro photography. So let's get into it. The first one is a view for every season. The first thing to think about is that good Japanese gardens have been designed to be enjoyed throughout the entire year. Each season presents a new look at a Japanese garden. Each season brings about new flowers that bloom, fall colors, snow that blankets some of the tamamono pruned uh, mounds and boulders that you often see in the garden. So don't hesitate to get out and visit a Japanese garden whenever you can, even in uh, the depths of winter or before winter, after the leaves have fallen, really any time of year that you can get out is a good time. The next tip is to look for layers and depth. Japanese gardens are often designed with a lot of layers and depth to a scene. This is an important aspect of photography as well, with ideas of foreground and background, etc. Strive for capturing that depth in your photo as well. The next point is to pre-plan for the garden style. As you may be aware, there isn't one style of Japanese garden, so each garden will have its own particulars that need to be planned for ahead of time. I'll have a link in the description for the different styles of Japanese gardens if you'd like to go deeper on that. But a garden that you can stroll through and get close up to uh, with various plants and shrubs is going to be very different than a garden where the viewing point is kept to primarily one spot, like where you only view it from the veranda of a temple, for example. Similarly, some doji tea gardens might be primarily in low light as they aim to preserve a moss garden. These are things that you can think about and prepare your settings and maybe the camera or the lens that you're going to bring with you ahead of time. The next point is finding your angle. Bend your knees, move around, uh, get down lower, step back a little bit. Um, all of this helps you find your angle. Sometimes the garden designer has a planned optimal viewing angle for the viewer, but that doesn't mean that you won't catch a unique perspective in other spots. Push yourself to go beyond the cliche spot, uh, the spot that you see on the Japanese garden pamphlet, for example. All of the scenes within the pamphlet, uh, it's those are going to be the ones that the average person walking by is going to snap a shot at and then move on their way. Go deeper and spend some time with the scene. So the next thing to, to think about is to choose your lens wisely. There are a few approaches when it comes to lenses. You can go with one prime lens and force yourself to create art within those boundaries, which is something that I often like to do. You can also rely on a zoom lens, which allows you to much more easily uh, get close up on a subject, back away from it. 
or you can bring a variety of lenses for capturing a wide angle and all-encompassing shot all the way down to a detailed close-up macro. Different focal lengths provide you different points of view. Watch out for my video on my favorite lenses and focal lengths for shooting Japanese gardens. The next thing to think about is the time of day that you're shooting. The time of day you're shooting at can drastically affect your shots. Many people say that shooting on cloudy days are the best because the clouds act as a filter for the sun creating harsh shadows. Overcast light is some of the best light to shoot in. Sunrise and sunset also have a softer light and create beautiful colors. But I found that many private Japanese gardens are closed during those hours. So if it's your home garden, then really uh, take time to explore the morning light versus the evening. Uh, it's, it will drastically change your shots. If it's a public garden or, or a private garden with restricted time, then you have to check with the garden to see if they have uh, organized photography days when it might be open beyond regular hours. Another bonus tip here is to avoid getting the cloudy sky in your photo. The whiteness from the sky often screws up your exposure and sort of confuses the camera. Think about keeping your shot below the top tree line to ensure you're focusing on the main garden scene. Another tip for improving your Japanese garden photography is to shoot in bad weather. Even if it's a famous place that has been shot a million times, you could differentiate your shot by weathering the storm and getting out there in the rain, the wind, or snow. Right after the rain is also a beautiful time when the colors will really pop. It will probably help to shoot in continuous autofocus and use a faster shutter speed to catch the extra movement that might be going on. Another way to challenge yourself and begin to see things differently is to shoot in black and white. You'll start to focus on the light in your shot and not let the colors distract you. Yes, contrary to what you want to believe, color is actually a distraction. If you're shooting in RAW as opposed to JPEG, which I highly recommend, then your camera is going to actually keep the color in the photo, even though your viewfinder is showing you black and white. That way, you can decide later to stick with the black and white scene or go with the color shot. This is one of the best ways to learn the importance of light which actually teaches you the importance of shadows and the darkness. I do have a video called In Praise of Shadows if you'd like to go deeper on that topic. A key point to remember when photographing a Japanese garden is that you are capturing your experience with the garden. The garden designer may have had their intentions when designing and building it, but you are now a part of the garden at that moment your connection to nature, their creativity, as well as the weather, the seasons. It's all a moment that will never truly be the same again. I'll be going deeper on photographing nature in Japanese gardens because it's a great way to eventually print one of your shots and bring that piece of nature and all of the health benefits it has for you inside and it will become a part of your everyday life.